of, first of all, I would like to appreciate God so very much for this week of redemption. Hallelujah. The week that, you know, God himself, he did not send anybody. Hallelujah. He did not send any person. But he himself offered himself. Hallelujah. To die, redeem us, to save us. Hallelujah. Yes, and I t also take this wonderful opportunity to appreciate mom, mom. We thank God so much for you. Yeah, we want to give glory to the name of the Lord for the anointing that is upon your heads. And we don't take it for granted, more especially in this end time generation. Praise the name of Jesus. Do you know that, do you believe that we are living in the end time generation? Hallelujah. And it's a blessing that God, you know, positions, you know, great, great anointings. Praise the name of the Lord to stand in the gap. Hallelujah. To take the lead. So we don't take it for granted. We pray, bless you, ma'am. And we pray that the Lord preserve you in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. I also want to thank God and acknowledge the anointing that is upon our spiritual covering. Mama, Prophetess Mia Mubina, and Papa Bishop Paul Chikwem. We are really so humbled. Yes, we are so humbled to sit under such an anointing. Amen. And all the servants of God. Hallelujah. The first assistant, I am Ministries International, Pastor Robert. Pastor Brian Gwenje, uh, Pastor uh, Ejura, Pastor Henry, Evangelist, uh, Odi, Pastor Jet, you know, we bless the name of the Lord, amen. Minister Ben, hallelujah. All the servants of God, amen. Protocol observed. We give glory and honor to the Spirit of the Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, the Father, the Son. Even for this week of redemption, we thank you, Almighty Father, Lord, for the sacrifice, the infinite, you know, sacrifice that has no value, Almighty Father, that can equal to it, Lord. We thank you for the blood that you shed, O oh my King. And Lord, I pray in Jesus' mighty name, even as Almighty Father, Lord, by the revelation of the Spirit of the Lord, Father Lord, as Lord you give us this utterance, I pray, O oh my King, is active, it is alive, it performs, O oh God. Lord, even as I speak, O oh Father, may thy word perform the word of redemption, O oh my King. The word, O oh mighty Father, Lord, O oh my King, Lord, that Almighty Father brought us back together, redeemed us, O Mighty Father, bought us at a costly price, O God. Father, I pray in Jesus' mighty name. We pray for understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. May your name be glorified. Thank you, Spirit of the Lord. May you come and minister. Exalt your name in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. You can please take your wonderful seats. Yes, I just want to appreciate God for... Uh, for this week. It is a wonderful week. I appreciate God for mom has been leading us. Amen. Yes, she has not been online, but you know, we have been having very, you know, fiery and anointed uh, redemption pa power, you know, packed prayers. Hallelujah. And we bless the name of the Lord for all the servants of the Lord that have gone ahead of me in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, this night I come with a title entitled only Jesus can redeem us. It is only Jesus that can redeem us. A lot of people have tried, you know, to redeem themselves. A lot of people have come up, you know, as substitutes, amen, for redemption. But I just want to tell you, redemption is only in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And we want to bless the name of the Lord because this is the promise of God that he gave unto us. Hallelujah. The promise of God that he gave and to us, you know, when man had sinned, I'm not going to go into that because uh, Apostle elaborated upon it, Mama, uh, Prophetess, uh, our mom elaborated upon it, you know, Pastor Robert elaborated upon it, praise the name of Jesus. We know because redemption, the reason why redemption came about was because, you know, this, of the separation, because of the disobedience. Amen. And I just want to tell us believers that God hates disobedience. Eh? The Bible says that it is actually in, uh, in the book of First, uh, First Samuel chapter 15 and verses 23. It says, for redemption, I mean for rebellion, is as the sin of witchcraft. Amen? Rebellion. 
or disobedience. Let, let, let me look at um, King James. You know, I always want to, you know, to refer to two books. Amen. First Samuel 15. Hallelujah. God hate it, it, it is Kwegamba. There's nothing that uh, displaces, you know. I know God cannot be displaced, but there's nothing that, you know, God that disturbs God, like rebellion. Praise the name of Jesus. The Bible tells us this was a time when uh, when Saul disobeyed the commands of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. When they had, uh, God gave them victory over the Amalekites and there were conditions that were given. Amen. There were yeah, regulations that were given unto them. Amen. But, you know, they went against it. And one thing that I just want to tell us that most of the times, you know, these things may be just too trivial. But the justice system of God, it is so sensitive. That however trivial it is, amen. Because this is a system that is automatic. So the Bible tells us that Saul thought that he was doing an advantage. Amen. But he went against the law of the Lord. And the Bible tells us, and you know, God immediately sent the prophet, prophet Samuel. Let us go to verse 23. It says that for rebellion is as... Well, okay, let us begin from verses 21. But the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, and, and chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord their God. Amen. In, Gal in Gilgal. And Samuel said... Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offering and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. So God associated rebellion to witchcraft. That's how bad rebellion is. Amen. So Adam and Eve disobeyed. They rebelled against, you know, what God had told them. Praise the name of Jesus. And because of this, you know, they were separated from God. Sin separates us from God. They were totally, actually, it causes death. And of course, death has no life in it. So it separated man. From the relationship that, you know, was, should I, should I say, a lovely relationship that was between man and God. So man disobeyed God and the separation came about. There, were no, there was no longer any relationship between man and God, the present name of Jesus. But then, there had to come now. Because God loved us so much. God loved the creation that he created. Praise the name of Jesus. He loved us. And then what he did, he had now to send a redeemer. And yesterday as Pastor Robert was narrating, he said, you know, redemption is associated to uh, the marketplace. It's a place of transaction. So the enemy our relationship with God. Praise the name of Jesus. He stole it. He took it away. The fellowship that, you know, we intimately had with God was destroyed. Why? Because of rebellion. Amen. But God did not just sit. God did not just sit. There had to be a transaction. Hallelujah. You know, that was supposed to take place to reclaim man back, to restore man back to his original position. Praise the name of Jesus. So, 
Now, redemption, of course, we know redemption is buying back. Amen. Buying back something from captivity. That means that it belonged to you, it was, but it was taken away. Amen. Now you are buying it back. You are buying it back to yourself. So man sinned in the Garden of Eden. And the Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death. So death came upon man. Amen. It wasn't only a physical death, but also a spiritual death. Praise the name of Jesus. Everything about man came to a standstill. The blessings that man had, believers, you know, all of them disappeared. But then we want to thank God because the counsel of God sat. There was nothing, when God looked around, there was nothing that could equal, hallelujah, to, you, you know, uh, that was valuable, that could redeem man. God looked at all, you know, the creation that he had created. All the very valuable stones you can think about. Both in heaven, on earth, under the earth, amen, in the planets, in the galaxies. There was nothing that was, you know, valuable enough to redeem man. It wasn't even the most expensive, you know, stones. Amen? That's expensive stones, very expensive stones. It wasn't the blue diamond. It wasn't the platinum. It wasn't the, the Tanzarite. Praise the name of Jesus. It wasn't the emerald. It wasn't, it wasn't, praise the name of Jesus. Nothing was fit enough to redeem man. Praise the name of Jesus. So God looked around. Not even in heaven. Not even the, you know, not even the cherubims. Not even the, the seraphims. Nothing in heaven was equal, hallelujah, was worth enough to redeem man. Until God himself, amen, God himself, the Bible tells us that for God so loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son, hallelujah. There is no value that is attached. There is no higher value than the son of God. It wasn't there. Amen. Believers, it wasn't even the trillions. It wasn't worth to redeem. That's how special you are. Clap for yourself. Let us thank God. Amen. That's how valuable we are. The Bible tells us in the book of 1 Peter, chapter 1 and verses 18, 18 and 19, the book of 1 Peter, chapter 1, and verses 18. One and verses 18, the Bible says that for as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation, hallelujah, received by tradition from your fathers, amen, that you must know, you must recognize that you are redeemed, you are ransomed, amen. From the, the useless or fruitless way of living inherited by tradition, amen, inherited by tradition that your forefathers, not with corruptible things such as gold or silver, but you were purchased with the precious blood of Jesus Christ the Messiah, hallelujah, like that of a sacrificial lamb without any blemish or spots. In the olden times, I think it was in the Roman Empire. Amen. Uh, actually, I think this is where the, 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 the word redemption derived from because they would get slaves and there were category of, of slaves. Amen. If I can remember well, over around three, 
categories. Amen. The, 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 that was the, this first category that where the word redemption comes from. The first category was, you know, the people who were set free. The slaves that were set free. And why were they set free? Because they were now useless. Amen. So the slave master, you know, will set them free. And no wonder they would even die, you know, within a few days. Because they would set them free, go in the streets. They had no nothing. Amen. And then the second category was that there were the people who tried, you know, to, to set themselves free. But remember, the price tag was so high. And you could not set yourself free, amen, as an individual, as a slave. And this is what religion is doing. Praise the name of Jesus. Religion, you know, makes you think that you are being set free. But I can liken it to a, a captive or a prisoner in Ruzira, amen, who escapes and runs away. By you running away from prison does not mean you are set free. You are still a prisoner. Amen. Even when you run to a place where nobody knows you, I just want to tell us you never feel free. Amen. And it is just a matter of time for you to be captured and taken back. So that is what religion does. It makes people think that, you know, you are safe, you are redeemed. But believers, it's just a matter of time. Amen. Redemption is only through Christ. It's not through the traditions of man. It's not through the wisdom of man. It is through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And then there's the, the third category where, you know, the slaves that, you know, the, this, the, the rich merchants came and, you know, bought them with a very high price. And believers, we are in that category. Jesus Christ said his blood. I just want to tell us there's nothing. When we go in the book of uh, Exodus, Exodus chapter, uh, we're not going to read there, but the plagues, amen? The, 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 the plagues that uh, the Lord God sent upon Egypt. You will read from chapter 8, chapter 9, and chapter 10. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. The, 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 the plague of the blood whereby, you know, uh, Everything, the river and all, every water body turned into blood. Amen. Then the frogs came in, the lice came in, you know. All these things came in until the tenth plague. Whereby the, the firstborn of, of every creature died. Amen. The firstborn of the, of the king died. The firstborn of the officials. Everything that was first died. But all these plagues, believers, could not save the children of Israel. They couldn't. Meaning that there's nothing that can give you redemption apart from the blood of Jesus. Apart from Jesus Christ. It is not even your goodness. It is not by the good works. Praise the name of Jesus. Because good works minus you accepting, as Apostle has been saying, minus you accepting Jesus Christ, it's nothing. I think it is said that, you know, the, 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 the most holiest person that lived in our century is, is it Mother Teresa? Because it's believed she died, she did really very, very good things. Amen. But it, do you know that even in spite of doing all those good things, if she did not accept Jesus Christ as her personal Lord and Savior, she would not receive salvation? Amen. I, I, I hope she did. So there's nothing that can save. That's why you see that from the fall of man, all the books in the Bible were all pointing, all of them, were all pointing to the redemptive power of Jesus. Amen. So everything they did, you know, the sacrifice of the lambs, the sacrifice, you know, of these animals, it was just a shadow showing us, pointing unto us, you know, that you know, redemption is coming. Amen. And we want to give glory to the name of the Lord that at its right time, 
at the fullness of time, Jesus Christ came. Glory be to the name of Jesus. He came for you and me. He came and redeemed us. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So regardless of how trivial sin seems to be. Amen. Sin is, sin is penalty is determined by the holiness of God. Regardless how trivial it is. Regardless how small it is. Amen. You know, people are playing around, you know, and most of the people, you know, people think that, oh, well, we are going to live on this world forever. But we are not. Amen? That's why they minimize the value of redemption. A lot of people, even Christians, abuse redemption because we don't value it. We don't know the power that is behind redemption. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So regardless how trivial, regardless how small sin, that sin seems, amen, sin is penalty is determined by the holiness of the God, hallelujah, against, of, of God, against whom it is committed. The holiness of God. Hallelujah. God does not take sin lightly. Let us read Isaiah 6, Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 3. Isaiah 6 and, and 3. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Isaiah chapter 6. And let us see what verse 3 says. Verse 3 says that, And one cried to another, said, Holy, holy, holy. Is the Lord of hosts. That all earth is full of his glory. Hallelujah. Meaning that God is holy. Amen. And you know the only way man. Can be in the presence of the Lord is holiness. Amen. The only way man can be. You know the reason why people underrate. The penalty of sin is because they haven't measured the character of God. The reason we underread, praise the name of Jesus, the penalty of hell is because we haven't measured the character of God. We forget that God is a holy God. Hallelujah. Most of the times, People assume that sin only reflects to them. You only assume that sin only reflects to you. When you sin, it's only reflected to you. Amen. But do you know that when we sin, it affects God? That's why the Bible tells us in Leviticus chapter 11 and verses 45. Leviticus chapter 11 and verses... 11 and verses 45. Mm, 45 says that for I am the Lord who brought you up out of the land out of the land of Egypt to be your God. Therefore you shall be holy for I am holy. Amen. You shall be holy for I am holy. So when you sin, it doesn't only reflect only to you. Amen. But you people, it affects God. That's why is it Isaiah 59 and verses 1. Amen. It says that, you know, I cannot see your prayers. I cannot hear them. Amen. Why? Because of sin. So sin does not only affect you as an individual. But it affects your relationship with God. Amen. Sin affects your relationship. It affects, you know, even the great things that God has for you. Praise the name of Jesus. So sin is penalty. It's not just determined by the degree of, you know, of our sin, but it's determined by the holiness of the one 
whom this sin is committed against. Do you know that wherever we sin, we are sinning against God? You are sinning against yourself. You are sinning against God. The Lord who is supposed to save. I just want to tell us believers, this redemptive power, it was by the grace of God. Hallelujah. By his love that he attached this price tag upon your life, upon you as an individual. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. So, I just want to tell us that God cannot, under, cannot overlook sin, <laughs> however small it is. Is it Numbers? Numbers 20. Whereby the Lord, you know, told Moses to go and strike people, you know, were demanding for water, water. They were, it was a stubborn church, like it is even today. Demanding, demanding, and then because of anger, amen. Remember, if before, God says that he's, Moses was the meekest man. And just imagine the great and mighty miracles that Moses did. I think according to human history, there's nobody who has ever, you know, performed miracles like Moses. Of course, through God, by God. And even God singled him out and he said that this is the meekest man. <laughs> but can you imagine just striking because of anger? Amen. But do you know that two times a church of the justice system, amen. The law and the justice system immediately Moses was not able to enter the promised land. Believers, that's how bad sin is. You may think it's something small. Now look at Adam and Eve. Of course, there are a lot of concepts, amen, in, in, the, in the forbidden fruit. Some people, you know, say it was uh, just the, the fruit that, you know, uh, was forbidden that they ate. Some people say it was over sex. Because I wonder whether Adam... If first had sex with the serpent, what happened? <laughs> you know, there are a lot of narrations, amen? People have a lot of concepts regarding that. But whatever it is, it was disobedience. So they were banished out of the Garden of Eden. Not only that, they were banished even, amen, from having this intimacy relationship with God. It looks small, but it can hinder your progress. I remember a story mom told us, may God rest the man, uh, the man of God is, is soul in peace. Who went, is it abroad? And then he went to a certain hotel. So as he was there, he picked a pen. Was it a pen? Just a pen. Then the spirit of the Lord told him that, you know, you have errored, or you're known. Amen. Or you're known. What have I done? Do you see? It may seem like a small pain. Amen. Yes. Mm. <laughs> so you see how damaging sin is. Amen. You see how damaging it is. And believers, just as I've said, most of the times we think that you just sin to fire you. To fire you. You 
Mumanyi we tuko samu kama. Actually, not only what we do outwardly, even our thoughts. Chovola bantu nebisere vinji. Oyinzo kula bo muntu ebweru nga budi omamu wana mutenda. Yes, pekati faba sidi se. Mukama yebazi. Budi omamu tenda ba nae gundi mulunji. Naenga mumutima. Omutima gogu avu. Ebi nitungatevi shifting. Sin affects us so badly. The Bible has told us that it is as bad as witchcraft. Sin. Because sin is disobedience. Amen. Yes, we have you in Galatians. Have you read Galatians? Galatians chapter chapter 3 and verses 23. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Galatians 3 and verses 23. Mm, verses 23 says that but before faith, Galatians chapter 3 and verses 23. Yeah, the Bible says that but before faith, before faith came, we were, we were kept under the law. Amen. Shut up. Shut up unto. Let, let me use this. My, my eyes, the light is not strong enough. Let me use amplified. Now, there, now before the faith came, we were perpetually guarded under the law. Kept in custody in preparation for the faith that was destined to be revealed. Hallelujah. So that the law served as our trainer. Praise the name of Jesus. Until Christ that we might be justified. Amen. By, by and through faith. Praise the name of Jesus. So. We see that our justification only came after the coming of Jesus. Mukama yebazwe. It came after the coming of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. And so that this law, amen, this law that God created, praise the name of Jesus, amen, it cannot be overlooked. Amen. God cannot overlook sin because he created law and a justice system of that law. Are we getting it? He created it. But we want to give glory to the Lord, still the Bible says. But Jesus Christ came. Amen. Amen. To overcome this law that was reigning upon us, the law of sin and death. Amen. We overcame it. In James chapter 2 and verses 10. James chapter 2 and verses 10. James chapter 2 and verses 10. James 2 and verse 10, what does the Bible say is that? For whoever keeps the law as are all, but stumbles and offends in one single instance, has become guilty of breaking, of breaking all of its present name of Jesus. So anything, however small you think that, because most of the people, nature na chochivi, oyogede kumuno lugambo, amen. There's nothing wrong with that. But before God, you break one, you are broken all. So, meaning that all sin is the same. There's no small sin. There's no big sin. Yes, we have as well. But we want to thank God for the redemptive power. Do you know that this redemptive power, believers, is able to make us walk in the ways of the Lord? 
Because he shed his blood. That we may be saved. And this redemption or salvation, it did not only stop at that point. It is still flowing even up to the date. It is still flowing. So he redeemed us. That we may be perfected in him. He redeemed us. So that we may overcome the flesh. He redeemed us. So that we may overcome the grip of the law. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. So, believers, the only way we are going to function, amen, in the redemptive power is when we realize it. Until, one thing that I've realized with the things of God, until you realize these this, this principles. Abo Luganda, to Jacobi and you meet his arm. This redemptive power believers did a lot to humanity. Amen? It did a lot to, human, to, to, you know, to us. But until we realized its value, until we realized its value, it will only be redemption, salvation, it will only be, you know, it will just be words. Yes, we have as well, Uganda. Hallelujah. Let, let us go to Galatians chapter 4 and verses 1 to 3. Galatians chapter 4 and verses 1 to 3. Mm. Galatians chapter 4 and verses 1 to 3. Let us read. Bible reader, I always want to refer to both. Amen. Yeah, Galatians chapter 4, verses 1 to 3, the Bible says, Now, what I mean is that as long as, yeah, as long as the heir is a child and under age, he does not differ from a slave, although he is a master of all the estate. But he is under guardians and uh, administrators and trustees until the date fixed by his father. So we, the Jewish Christians, or we Christians also, when we were minors, we are kept like slaves under the rules of the Hebrew ritual and subject, amen, subject to the elementary teachings of a system of external observations, hallelujah, and regulations, praise the name of Jesus. So we see that believers as long as we don't understand just like a minor even when the, the, the father has all the wealth but they are not going to enjoy the benefits of the wealth or the riches that you know their father has bestowed unto them Yes, we ever see. So, Okuto Sanga, we have come to the realization of all Uganda of these things. Redemption of all Uganda, you know, the human race. Twali to live a kufa. But we are set free. Hallelujah. Amen. So, this redemption required a price. The sin, the whatever, now. It required this heavy price. Just as I told you that God looked around. Amen. He looked at his galaxies. He looked at the, you know, the, the planets. He looked at all the creation that he had created. He looked at the expensive stones, the sapphires, and all these things. But nothing of all this, amen, could equal. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't fit enough. It wasn't valuable enough to buy us back. It wasn't. Okutusa yesu weyadja. Amen. So meaning that 
Mankind, you know, was held captive of sin. We were held captive. Amen. So it only had to, uh, to take the atoning, you know, grace of God. That's why, of all Uganda, it took God. Katonda ye nyini nyini, of all Uganda, yava muntebe ye. Nafuko muntu. Glory be to the Lord. I don't know whether you're understanding. Amen. He became man. He was a hundred percent man. That is the value that is attached. Hallelujah. That he may liberate us. Hallelujah. We who are kept like slaves under the rules of the, of the Hebrew ritual and subject to the elementary teachings of a system of external observations and regulations. That's where we were kept. Hallelujah. Now, this freedom required an enormous price. I don't know whether we know how big that price is. Amen. It required the blood of a sinless person. It required the blood of Jesus. Without any blemish. Mukama yebazibu. So he purchased us. He purchased us. The price paid. Hallelujah. The price paid for you and me determines our value. It determines how valuable you are. Abolu gana toli chintu wechito wechito. That is why it is very important to know who you are in the Lord. Because if you don't know who you are in the Lord, you are going to miss out of a lot of benefits that the Lord has placed for us. But until we know how valuable we are, until we know how God values us, I watch it again. Oboch tegeda simani. Amen? Because the price tag that was placed upon us, that is what determines our value. God himself, amen, came in the form of a human being to redeem us. There was nothing, totally nothing. Hallelujah. Is there any sacrifice that is higher than the sacrifice of Christ? It isn't there. So be believers, that's who you are. That's why when you are walking, walk with your head up, up high. When you are preaching the gospel, don't be ashamed. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So God himself he had to separate himself. He separated himself from who he is. Can you imagine? So that he may come down unto us. <laughs> Glory be to Jesus. Yes, we have as well. Can you imagine Katonda Yenin? Amen. Neye Yambula Obwa Katonda. Nabuteka wan si. I've come to redeem you. Amen. It was at a high cost. You are highly valued, son of God. You are highly valued, daughter of God. Hallelujah. God walked out of God, if I may. Actually, that's how I wrote it. Amen. That God, he walked out of God to humanity. <laughs> Praise Jesus. Do you know how precious you are? Amen. God walked out of God. Yes, we have as well. That you may be set free. That you may be delivered. That you may be saved. Yes, we have as well. 
So this redemptive power, word price, yes, it went back to God because it was a price. We say that redemption is a place of transaction. Amen. So the price had to be paid back to God. And then we were set free. Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 and verses. Ephesians chapter 1 and let us look at verses 7 and 8. Ephesians 1 verses 7 and 8. The Bible tells us that in him we have redemption. Deliverance and salvation through his blood. The remission. Amen. Actually all these are benefits. Amen. In him we have the redemption, deliverance, and salvation, meaning that redemption did not only stop at the cross. It did not end at the cross. Amen. But from there, we receive deliverance, salvation, through his blood, the remission, forgiveness of our offenses. Amen. Just imagine the offenses that we committed. But because of this redemption, we were forgiven. Hallelujah. The forgiveness, the remission, forgiveness of our offenses, shortcomings, trespasses, in accordance with the riches. Oh, thank you, Jesus. It was in accordance with the riches and the generosity of his gracious favor. Mukama Yebas Uganda is somebody in the house. Amen. So we see that Christ's death on the cross, it wiped out all the record of our wrongdoing. The redemptive power. It wiped everything. And the devil is still accusing you. It was done. Hallelujah. It was done in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So I've told us that salvation does not only end at redemption. But it is still continuous. Mukama Yebaziwe. It is still continuing. Mukama Yebaziwe. So we find that because of ignorance, many people do not know the benefits that come with redemption. That's why. People are still condemning themselves. People still don't know the, the benefit that God gave unto us. People still don't understand the price that was paid at the cross. But just because we are not understanding it. Yes, we have as well. Let us look at some of the benefits. Amen. It's long, but let me wind there and let us go straight to, to the benefits. Amen. We were reconciled back to God. Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 13. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 13. I would have loved somebody to read me in King James. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 13. Let me read in amplified version. Amen. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away or so far away through the so far away, through the blood of Christ, have been brought near. Amen. So we were reconciled back. He brought us back. For he is himself our peace, our bond of unity and harmony. So we see what redemption did. We who were far away, we were reconciled back to God. But now you are able to go before God and yes, please. Yeah, thank you. Mm. Yes. Mm. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you. As we were far away, but now we are brought back into fellowship. That fellowship of Adam and Eve, whereby God would come in the evening and dine together. Because of redemption, it was restored. 
knowledge it so you see how a lot of people miss it out people only come in fellowship with God in a relationship with God only when they come to church and yet this relationship believers it's you know it has no time limit actually it even has no program so because of the redemption amen because of the redemptive power this redemption that came unto us that was freely given unto us we were reconciled back in fellowship with god hallelujah now you don't need a mediator you just go straight to him jesus christ you know he separated us unto god you are now separated unto God. What do I mean? You are separated from the world. You are separated from the crowd. You are separated from sin. You are separated from all these forces. But he brought you now closer to him. You can now go and talk to him. You can now go and dine with him. You can now go and fellowship with him. Discuss with him. Mukama yeba zibe. So we were reconciled back to him. Then the other thing that we are sanctified. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hebrews chapter 13 and verses 12. Can you please read in King James first? Hebrews chapter 13. Mm, Hebrews 13 and verses 12. Yes. Mm. Mm. Amen. If I repeat to twelve again. Just twelve. Mm. 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 Praise the name of Jesus. So we see that, you know, Jesus Christ, the Bible has told us, thank you, that therefore Jesus suffered and he died outside the gate or the city, amen, in order that we might purify, amen, and consecrate the people through the shedding and his own blood set them apart as holy, amen. Because the unpure, the people with the leprosy were cast out of the gate. And out of the gate is the place where Jesus Christ died and redeemed us. So that we may be sanctified. He cleans us from outside the gate. As who are banished. But Jesus Christ, he sanctified us. Amen. Because of his redemptive power, we were sanctified and brought back to him. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Then the other thing is the spirit of the Lord is upon us. In the book of Matthew chapter 3 and verses 11. Matthew chapter 3 and verses 11. What did the redemption, what did redemption do unto us? Matthew chapter 3 and verses 11. Mm. Mm. Praise the name of Jesus. So this was John announcing the coming of Jesus Christ. And what the coming of Jesus Christ believers would benefit us. He says that I'm baptizing you with water. But there's one who is coming. Whom I'm not even worthy to untie the shoelace. Amen. He is going to baptize you with fire and the spirit of the living God. So the benefit of redemption. Praise Jesus. We are baptized by the spirit of the Lord. The spirit of the Lord is upon us. That's why we are able to function. That's why we are able to operate. We are not alone. Meaning that we are not alone. Amen. Meaning that we are the dwelling place of God himself. The benefit of redemption. Hallelujah. Then the other one is principalities are disarmed. Colossians chapter 2 and verses 18. Colossians chapter 2 and verses 18. Mm. Mm. 
Yes, let's go to 19. Mm. I praise the name of Jesus. Let me read here. Colossians. It is Colossians chapter 2. Have you been reading chapter 2 and verses? Read verses 14. 2 and verses 14. Hmm. Mm. Praise the name of Jesus. So we see principalities were disarmed. So there's no principality that can stand against you. There's no principality that can fight against you. Unless you have not realized the power that is in redemption. Praise the name of Jesus. So the principalities were disarmed. Everything that stood fighting against you, it was disarmed. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us. There are a lot of things that were contrary to us. They are contrary to your plans. They are contrary to your future. They are contrary to your purpose. Hallelujah. But because of the redemptive power of Christ, hallelujah, they were all disarmed. Praise the name of Jesus. Then the other things that our sins are not remembered anymore. Jeremiah 31 and verses 34. Our sins are no longer remembered. Amen. Can you just imagine if your sins, you know, from the time maybe you are born, from the time you, you, you came to understanding and you know that record of the sin that you committed the Lord is still keeping it for you but because of the blood of the lamp amen our sins were wiped away amen they were wiped away you can read it you can read at Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 34 as I'm winding up Hallelujah. Can you imagine, believers, it doesn't matter whether you killed. It doesn't matter whatever you did. It doesn't matter whether it is the gravest, you know, sin it is. The redemption. See how powerful the blood of Jesus Christ is. That he wipes it out. He blots it out. Never to be retrieved again. Yeah, Jeremiah 31 and verse 34. They shall teach no more every man's neighbor mm. and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. The redemptive power of the Lord, amen. It remembers your sin no more. Sin is not remembered again. It is, it, it is blotted out. Don't allow the enemy to whisper in your ears. You, you know, that is the works of the enemy. He just wants, you know, to, to, to rewind what the Lord dealt with. To bring it back again. So that you know you don't progress. That's why you find yourself. Because you have not realized. The power that is in the redemptive. In the blood of Jesus Christ. In the redemption of the Lord. To something that you ask God to forgive you 10 years ago. Amen. Because you don't know the value of the redemptive power of God. Ten years ago, was Sabah Mukama Chiku Sonyi. Naina Kat Mukama and Sonyi Wagund. God forgave you. Amen. He says, as far as the east is from the west, so have I separated, you know, your sins away. That means 
mukama ya chera vida. Amen. That is what the redemptive power of, of Christ did. It, you know, the sour sins are no longer remembered. So don't always go before God. Mukama wa musabye last week. Mukama, unsonyiwa na bie. Amen. I stole from capital shoppers. God forgive me. Amen. After three days. Oh, God forgive me. I stole from capital shoppers. Oh, God forgive me. One year, year in and year out. I just want to tell us the power of the redemptive, you know, of God's redemption. Dealt with that. Your sin is no longer remembered. It isn't remembered. Hallelujah. Then we received our deliverance from curses. Received our deliverance from bondages. You, you read Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13. Then, and also redemption from sicknesses, from diseases. By his stripes, the Bible tells us that we are healed. Amen. We were healed. When we realize Abolugand Amanya Gali Mukununu Wakwetuafuna, there's no sickness that will will inhabit your body anymore in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Also, we receive deliverance from the wrath of God. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 6. We receive deliverance from the wrath of God. Amen. But because of what Jesus Christ did, oh, we were redeemed. We, became, we came, you know, we had that peace with the Lord. Can you read Galatians chapter 3 and verses 13? Galatians chapter 3 and verses 13. Yeah, I'm winding up. The Bible says that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cast is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Mm, praise the name of Jesus. Christ has redeemed us. Amen. Christ has purchased our freedom. Our freedom was purchased. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, somebody. Our freedom was purchased. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Redeeming us from the cast, from the doom. From the wrath of God, from the wrath of the law, and its condemnation. Amen. By himself becoming a curse for us. He became a curse for us. For it is written in the scripture, curse is everyone who hangs on that tree. So Christ became a curse for, uh, for us. Amen. In our place. That we may be redeemed. Hallelujah. That we may be redeemed from his wrath. The wrath that led us to death. Amen. But Jesus Christ cleared it in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. And believers, we also, yes, we received the adoption of sons. We are no longer, you know, aliens. Amen. But we are sons. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 3. I'm rushing because, yes, my time is already, uh, you know, up. Galatians chapter 4 and verses 3 and 5. Please read us. Even, even, even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the, of mm. the world. Mm. But when the fullness of time was come, yes. God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, mm. to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sin. Oh, glory be to the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We are not just people, but we are sons of God. So we, the Jews or Christians also, when we were minors, we were kept like slaves under the rules of the, of the Hebrew ritual. Amen. And subject to the elementary teachings of a system of external observations and regulations. But... When the proper time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, hallelujah, born subject to the regulations of the law, to purchase our freedom, mukama yeba ziwe, and to redeem us, mukama yeba ziwe, yeah, that we might be adapted and have sonship, amen, conferred upon us and be recognized as God's sons. So, by the redemption of the Lord, we are now recognized. Amen. 
Heaven recognizes us. Satan recognizes us. Oh, hallelujah. That we are sons of God. Amen. And lastly, let me wind up with this. Believers, because of the redemption power of God, we can now access the throne. Oh, we are no longer slaves. Amen. We now go straight to the throne. Believers, do you know the privilege that is? That you now go before God and you declare. Amen. And it takes place. You go before God and you pray. And God answers that. You go before God and you intercede. And the Lord, oh my God, he just signs. Akubako stamp bukubi. Mukama yeba zibwe. Hallelujah. We got that access, which was not there. How privileged we are. What a privilege. So abo lugan binebi to be gained that to kolida. Gatubi take it day. We are only going to get knowledge. Amen. We are only going to be equipped with knowledge. Omani, you are equipped with knowledge, and yet this knowledge is not functional. But what this week, amen, did to human race, to the human race. Who are you to stand and declare and the enemy bows down? Amen. That was all the work at the cross. Oh, we give glory to the Lord. Father, Lord, we want to thank you, Lord. We bless your name. Let us stand up and bless the name of the Lord. We honor and glorify your name. Thank you, Almighty Father, for redemptive power. Thank you, Almighty Father, for the adoption, Almighty Father, Lord. Yes, the right of sonship, oh my King. Thank you, Lord, for the access unto thy throne, oh my King. Thank you, Lord, for the deliverance, oh my Father. Thank you, Lord, for the power and authority you've given unto us, oh God. Yes, oh my Father, power over principalities, over authorities, oh God. Because of the redemption, oh my Father, the redemptive power at the cross. Because of the blood that you shed, that we overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of thy testimony. Father, who are we, oh my Father, that can stand, oh my Father, Lord, by the authority that you've given unto us because of the work of redemption, oh God, that, oh my Father, you did, oh my Father, on the cross. Father, Lord, behold, we are able to stand. We are able, oh my King, to declare. We are able, Lord, to profess and confess that we are sons of in God. And Almighty oh, Father, it did not only end, oh my Father, Lord, at that place, so oh, my King of Redemption, but believers, oh my King, Father, I thank you, Lord, because it's even taking us unto eternity in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we thank you, we honor your name. I pray, Almighty oh, Father, that we may acknowledge, oh God, this mystery of redemption, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Somebody give a loud and clap unto the Lord. Glorify the name of the Lord because of the great thing that he did on the cross. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus once again. Give him glory. Ah, give him glory. Hallelujah. We want to bless the name of the Lord. And why don't you appreciate God for Pastor Helen? God bless you, man of God. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. Like mom says, this is knowledge that you should apply in your prayer. It's not just what you write in your books. Glory be to God. We are coming to an end of um, this session. And we, are, we believe you are so blessed in this week of resurrection. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We want to bless the name of the Lord. As everyone is lifting up your hands, let us declare the words of our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever in Jesus' mighty name and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever in Jesus' mighty name and surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord with my wife and children 
and great grandchildren forever and ever in Jesus' mighty name. Once again, give the Lord a mighty hand clap and God bless you as we wind up in Jesus' mighty name. God bless. Hallelujah. Yes, if I was in a if you come with your offering, please bring it quickly to the altar as a